The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Welcome to Health for a Lifetime. I'm your host, Don McIntosh. And today we've kind of rolled up our sleeves. We're going to look at some very practical things. And the title of today's program, Dr. McNeilis, is uh, The Pharmacy in Your Kitchen. Um, now, you've written a book called God's Healing Way. And I understand that it, it's in quite a few countries now, 12, is that right? So Spanish and uh, now in Cambodia as well, in the Khmer language and in Romanian and uh, what other languages? Spanish and several African dialects, Vietnamese, Laotian. Wow. So doesn't it really does not matter where you live today. And as we know, this is an international program. There's lots of people watching in many different parts of the world. If you have the certain uh, different things that you see on the set today, you probably can do what Dr. McNeilis has to say. But uh, probably more than that, there's a spiritual component. I noticed you've called it not man's healing way, but God's healing way. Why did you call the book this? God has a way of healing that is akin to his way of salvation. And we learn in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, that God's grace that brings salvation has appeared to all men. There are no boundary barriers to God's salvation. But we learn also in the third book of John, verse 2, we learn that God, above all things, wishes that we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. In order for God to be fair and just, his saving way and his healing way must be available to all people, not just to people who have wonderful opportunities and mm. uh, of medical care, which we in, enjoy in some parts of the world and not in others. It must be inexpensive. It must be available without a lot of monetary outlay. Mm -hmm. It must be, however, invaluable, extremely um, helpful. It must be easy to understand so that no matter what educational level or from educational school one come from in the world, it is easy to understand. And yet, like many of Christ's simple teachings, profound. It must be simple to practice available in your house or in your kitchen. It must at the same time be highly effective for sin and sickness. Interesting. You know, I, I studied the Greek words in the New Testament once, being a pastor and, and sort of a nurse before that. Uh, the word for salvation, as I understand, is sozo, which also means heal. It's the same word. So I, I really like that fact that, that, you know, the salvation has occurred to or appeared to everyone. Yes. And uh, same here. Now, in this book, you have some, it's kind of divided in sections. I really like how it's divided. And it kind of deals with different aspects of the health laws than simple home remedies. And we want to talk today a little bit about some of those simple home remedies. And which ones have we picked up, uh, fixed up in the kitchen today for us? We have the contrast bath. Now, you want me to do something special here? Do I need to get, yes. get prepared for this? Should I take off my shoes? Or? Let's have you take off at least one shoe and one sock. Okay. We'll say that you have a, an infection on one of your feet there. You may have done like some of our Amish friends, stepped on a nail right, out there in right the barnyard. Right there, it looks like there's a little problem there. And you're getting a little bit infected in red there. Okay. And right. uh, you know if you had to go into the hospital or emergency room, they would put you on antibiotics very quickly. And they charge me a lot of money, too. Oh, that's the problem with the <laughs> Amish people. They don't have insurance mm -hmm. and so money is a problem for those in our area. So do I need a tetanus shot? Well, uh, 
they do not do that. Okay. So that means that, of course, I must get busy Very and rapidly. treat it okay. um, in a way that will be helpful. Well, you know, the contrast bath simply means that the water is in a contrast temperature. At one extreme, it will be hot, and the other, it will be cold. Okay. So and what, do the, we, what do we start with? We always start with the hot water. Okay. And so that's a good rule of thumb to remember. We start with the hot, and the hot is the longest amount of time. It's around three minutes of hot, and then about one half to one minute of cold. Okay, so how hot is hot? Should I, do you want to put uh, my foot in there? You know, this is another reason I have rolled up my sleeves. Okay. <laughs> because what I tell people, if you don't have a bath thermometer, we'll pretend this is the one for the hot water, and this will be the first one. Okay. That I want to know how hot it is. Okay. If I use my hand, it may not be the same sensitivity as your foot. And mm -hmm. so I do what a lot of mothers will do with babies, uh, test the water with your elbow. Oh, that's a little more sensitive, isn't it? And you can, if you can leave your elbow in the water and not pull back, it's probably going to handle your foot. Well, so uh, there's some real techniques involved here in really what you do. Now, let's say you're a diabetic or you can't sense things in your foot or your extremity very well. It's really important then to put that elbow in. That is correct. And this is one good reason to always start at a bit of a more comfortable temperature mm -hmm. and recognizing that if you have circulatory problems, you will not want to go as hot as you can stand. You may want to simply go at an elbow temperature. So it's not best for a physician to treat themselves. You need to have someone else maybe to help you out, especially if you have that situation. Should I put my foot in there now? Let's just check it here. Well, seems like I could have just a little more uh, warm water. So have a tea kettle with some uh, boiling water available that you can just pour in a little bit, a more. Little bit more. Okay. And then retest All right. there. It's about right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. And with a small child, you may just want to assist them to put their foot in and ask them, how does that feel? Is yes. that pretty warm? Uh, this, this, this feels uh, different than it's ever felt before. <laughs> so how long did we keep it in here in the hot, did you say? About three minutes. Okay, about three minutes, and you don't, you know, you just kind of click it off there. And then, uh, then what? After three minutes, you will want to transfer your foot to cool water. Cool water. Now, if you are a diabetic, again, or someone with circulatory problems or numbness, yeah. you may want to just go with cool water, not ice cold water. Okay. But if you are young and vigorous and uh, have just simply an infection. Like us. Uh, we hope, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you can have ice ice in your water. Okay. And that will be This will cool. really make you... <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Right. And with the small children, you may, may want to play a game and pretend the ice cubes are fish or something like that. And you may only go to the one half minute instead of one whole minute. <laughs> with the kids, and I'm so sure. so it is adapted to the vigor of the person that you are treating and the degree of uh, severity of the problem you're treating. Okay, the more now, hot or the more cold will be intent, will give you the healing effect. Now, we're, tr we're treating a nail. I've stepped on a nail. Is that right? Do That's I remember, correct. Do I remember what I did? And so what exactly is this doing with that nail? How is it helping? How is this helping? The hot brings the uh, blood to the surface of the skin. Okay. And the cold closes the blood flow to the surface of the skin and drives it inward. So basically we are increasing the circulation by increasing the movement or the flow of blood in that area. So it's like your car gets stuck in the ditch and you go back and forth and back and forth Correct. and you finally get it out. Correct. And the reason that that is done is for very good physiologic reasons. When you move the blood, you are getting in your red cells uh, that bring oxygen and carry away waste materials such as carbon dioxide, products of cell metabolism. You move the plasma, the river in which the red cells travel, which brings in metabolic nutrients to the cells and again takes some of the waste products out. It also brings in your white blood cells 
who are the soldiers of our body. Whenever there's an infection, they are there ready to fight whatever germ or ailment is there. And so we bring in the troops, we take out waste, we bring in nutrients and oxygen. So how often do we do this? Let's say it's just, a, you know, your typical uh, person stepping on a nail. Um, and how often should we do this, let's say, uh, uh, over a week period? Do you do it every day? How often do you do it? That's a good question because um, often it depends on the severity of the problem and mm -hmm. if you can catch things right away, you don't have to do things quite as often. But if things have, uh, if you've had a delay in getting uh, treatment, then you may have to be more serious about it. And so what I recommend is anywhere from five to seven changes. And one change is three minutes of hot and mm -hmm. one half to one minute of cold. That's one change. Five to seven changes. Right. A I day. call it the Naaman treatment. Naaman. Oh, like you're dipping uh, like seven Naaman times. Naaman dipped into the Jordan River seven times. That's we good... learn in the Bible <laughs> it is, uh, that was to be the uh, sign of his faith for the cure of his leprosy. It's a good story, too, especially when you're like on time four and you don't want to go back down anymore, right? <laughs> right. Keeps you going. And then do you do that just one day or do you do it several days in a row? What I may do, this treatment may be done anywhere from once a day to four times a day. Again, depending on the severity of the treatment. And it can be done until the, the leg or the infection or the ailment is completely disappeared. So I tell people, do it as long as you need to until your um, condition is back to normal. Any cautions about this? I mean, you've done this around the world. I'm sure that in, a, in America or in a, in a Western type country, we get our water out of the tap. Uh, how do you pick water, say, if you're in the middle of uh, the jungle? We have to pick what we have. And we may not have ice. And I have been in villages where I have not been able to get ice. But there is a well. Well water is not ice cold, but well water is considerably cooler than the tropical air okay. uh, outside. So as much of a contrast as we can get from the hot to the cold will still give you a good result. So would you pick running water versus uh, water that's been in a... It won't matter. Doesn't we matter. can pick it anywhere. But there is one thing uh, that I always recommend to people that is uh, very important. We may not have all of the resources, but we do have one resource, and that's our heavenly resource that is constant with us. Mm -hmm. And I do always remind people to begin with prayer. And what do I ask for? What do, should we ask for uh, when we begin with prayer? We ask for God to bless the treatment. Mm -hmm. We ask for his blessing. We ask for the great physician to be present with us. He knows the ailment. He knows the cause, often when even an earthly physician doesn't. But he also knows the cure. Mm. And so we ask him to be present, to be by our side. At the end of a treatment, I also remind people to pray. And this is the faith part. Thank the Lord that he blessed you with this treatment. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until you see the result. That is not faith. Step out in faith. The evidence Thank of him not seeing. for doing that. Mm -hmm. And faith is the currency that opens the treasury of heaven. We're talking to Dr. Mary Ann McNeilis. What a wonderful book. And what practical, simple, but powerful and profound things can help us no matter where we live. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be looking at more uh, simple remedies that you can do in your own kitchen with your own pharmacy and looking at more of God's healing way. We hope you join us when we come back. Have you found yourself wishing that you could shed a few pounds? Have you been on a diet for most of your life but not found anything that will really keep the weight off? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then we have a solution for you that works. Dr. Hans Deal and Dr. Eileen Lettington have written a marvelous booklet called Reversing Obesity Naturally, and we'd like to send it to you free of charge. Here's a medically sound approach successfully used by thousands who are able to eat more and lose weight permanently without feeling guilty or hungry through lifestyle medicine. Dr. Deal and Dr. Lettington have been featured on 3ABM, and in this booklet, 
They present a sensible approach to eating, nutrition, and lifestyle changes that can help you prevent heart disease, diabetes, and even cancer. Call or write today for your free copy of Reversing Obesity Naturally, and you could be on your way to a healthier, happier you. It's absolutely free of charge, so call or write today. Welcome back. We're talking with Dr. Marianne McNeilis, and we're talking about God's Healing Way and the pharmacy in your kitchen. And we're going to look at some practical things with, what do we call this, charred wood? Charcoal. Charcoal. And then we're going to hear some stories about how God has really used simple means to heal people. What about charcoal? What do we, what do we need to learn about it? Very simply, charcoal is charred wood or mm -hmm. wood that has been burned in the absence of air for a prolonged period of time and then ground into a powder. And charcoal is the treatment of choice by the American Academy of Pediatrics for poisoning in children. But it has many other additional uses that make it a necessary and important part of your kitchen pharmacy. Mm. So what about uh, this bug bite I have here on my wrist? Is that going to help with that? I find that a charcoal put on the skin as a poultice is a wonderful complement to the hot and cold contrast bath that we just talked about mm -hmm. for an infection. And I am going to make a charcoal poultice first by making a little charcoal paste. And that is by adding a little bit of water to our charcoal powder until it's about the consistency of a thick paste or like peanut butter, something like that. Probably don't want to do this in your blender. Uh, you might not want to because certainly <laughs> charcoal, as you can almost see from the picture here, can poof. Uh, that is, it's such a fine powder that any uh, vigorous stirring will cause you to have uh, charcoal in many other places than where you desired it to be. Well, you can get this probably as liquid charcoal, as I recall, but uh, you can make your own, too. Yes, and this is the way that charcoal will keep indefinitely on your kitchen shelf. Just keep it in a closed container, and it will keep for a very prolonged period of time. You don't want to leave it open because charcoal has a wonderful property of absorbing um, poisons uh, such as toxins, gases, even bacteria and viruses. So anything that's next to it, it'll, it'll absorb, so you want it to keep it closed absorb. up. It will absorb. Okay. So you like to keep it closed, but it's an inert substance, and so it will keep at a very indefinite period of time. It's a very nice thing to uh, keep, keep around. Just find a source for getting it and, and keep a container or two around your home. And also for sharing with, with others. It has many wonderful uses, as explained in God's Healing Way in the chapter on charcoal. Mm -hmm. It so, can be used for infl infections. It can be used for bug bites. So then you have or, a little piece of paper, whatever you have uh, there. Well, one very easy way to make a poultice is either with a loosely woven cloth or if you are where there is pa are paper towels, mm -hmm. you can use a paper towel. And uh, a simple poultice can be either made uh, with a paper towel, loosely woven cloth, and a piece of plastic which I have down okay. here, and I'm going to put that on the table first, and then I'm going to decide what size I want my charcoal poultice. I want it to well cover right uh, an area on either side of an uh, infected area okay. because the body um, will have inflammation in areas where even where it is around the area that is not showing. Inflammation or infection usually means there's redness, swelling, Good for a spider bite, good for a snake bite, good for any kind of situation? Yes, good for scorpion if you're in an area as, as we have been in some parts of the world where scorpions are and some parts of the United States where they are. Mm -hmm. Any noxious uh, substance or critter uh, can be helped, and there are directions on how to use it for these things. But we're going to say that you have a infected bug bite here okay. with some pain and swelling All right. and so once I put this this uh, poultice on how long do I keep it on you can keep it on for several hours or overnight mm -hmm. and you may replace it um, 
it can be used often in, in conjunction, as I said, with hot and cold water treatment, such as the contrast bath. Mm -hmm. And um, it can be left on until you do your next treatment or overnight. See. Well, I've spread this on here. It's like a, the jelly of a sandwich. All right. And we'll say that these pieces of paper are the... The bread? The bread. Oh, good. And we spread it within about an inch or so of the outer right. rim there so we don't spill out. And then... Let's and see. let's see here. Now you can see we have our little sandwich here. Are you going to put that on my wrist? And we're going to put it right over the center of this swollen paint. Feels hole. better already. Right on. It does. <laughs> Often it can be almost All miraculous. Right. Then you and put then I put a piece of plastic on top. And the purpose of this is to keep the charcoal from getting out onto things which it can stain, but also to keep it from um, drying out. Mm -hmm. And then I may want to hold it in place with a elastic wrap or just any type of a cloth or binding material. Okay. And so then I can just simply that wrap way. this around and pin it in place, pin it securely so that this poultice does not move. And then you can leave it on for several hours or overnight, change it uh, um, periodically as uh, the condition uh, warrants. Now, you showed me a picture a little earlier of you, you doing this type of treatment. Where was it that you did that? In the country of Romania. Mm -hmm. Can we look at that picture? I think that we have I had it. an interesting experience. One summer we were going around to different uh, churches, groups, and teaching well, natural remedies. The gentleman um, in this picture, whose hand is seen here, had about a month before uh, been a, a working and had, dev had gotten something he knew into his uh, hand. He didn't know if it was a sliver or just what the nature of the fibrous material was, but the doctor assured him there was no way to go in and retrieve it. It was, uh, and he suffered for about four weeks with some tenderness and swelling, and the physician felt eventually it would fester and come out. Mm -hmm. Well, my my Romanian friends that were with me decided to do a natural remedy treatment uh, that evening. Uh, before we were going to have our our uh, natural remedy seminar the following day, and that evening he did a hot and cold contrast bath, just as we did a little bit early, earlier. So it's hot for what was three it? Three minutes. minutes cold, cold for one and a half. One half to one minute. Oh well, okay. Tell for about <laughs> seven changes, uh -huh. and then he put on a charcoal poultice, and the gentleman went to bed. The next morning, when he got up, he noticed that there was a little bit of a uh, protrusion on the skin surface there and my uh, Romanian helper uh, just kind of pushed pressed ever so slightly and out popped a large sliver that was at least an inch long Is that right so that which charcoal you see in drawn the picture. it out and the charcoal and with the hot and cold contrast bath um, worked very well to uh, finish what uh, had been festering in there for some time. Well, needless to say, our my Romanian friend was more than happy to share with others um, hmm. that wonderful experience. However, I would also like to share one final story that comes from the work with the Amish people in my area. One Friday evening, just after we moved into our new home health retreat uh, in southeastern Minnesota, I w was paid a visit with a horse and buggy from our close Amish neighbors. It was the mother with about four of her ten children came over. And I thought, how nice. They were coming just to welcome us. And so I showed them around our new facility. And as I got to the treatment room, the mother suddenly pulled up the sleeve of her little six-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. And to my horror, <laughs> I realized the true cause of her visit. The story was that this little girl had gotten an, an insignificant nick in her finger or on her hand three or four days before, but by now she had pain and swelling 
from her entire hand really up to her elbow and she had what we commonly call blood poisoning or a septicemia, in, septicemia or an infection where the bacteria had gone not just from the local area but were starting to spread through See her some body. red lines up her arm. Exactly. And very painful. She mm -hmm. had not slept for several days. But all this time she had not made any noise or any crying or anything, but it did hurt. Well, I saw immediately that we needed to work on the kitchen table. And so my kitchen table was initiated with two basins, one with hot and one with cold water. Contrast bath. We did the contrast bath. Mm -hmm. Now, if any of you know, when something is swollen and painful, it does not always feel the best to put it in hot water. But the mother admonished her little girl, don't whimper, you do the treatment. Three minutes of hot, one half minute of cold, seven changes. And then, of course, I would not let them go home until I had applied a charcoal poultice to the entire hand up past the elbow and encased her whole little arm and hand in a charcoal poultice. How old was she? She was about six. Mm -hmm. And so then they went home with directions to continue that treatment and plenty of charcoal to make a poultice and to continue with that. The next morning, I was able to stop by the home and discover she had slept for the first time quite peacefully that night. And it was only a matter of three or four days and her infection was pretty well completely gone without the need to go in and get antibiotics or a physician visit, which certainly would have had to happen mm -hmm. if her mother had not been made aware of some very effective simple home remedies, all with the power of prayer, mm -hmm. of course. So these uh, simple remedies that we've looked at, really, the contrast bath today and then also charcoal, anybody can do those. Um, and uh, really, just to summarize it, see if I'm correct, that contrast bath takes the water in or takes the, the object in and out, kind of dislodges it, and the charcoal kind of finishes its job with all the different toxins and poisons that are around. Isn't that right? Basically, what it does is that the contrast bath moves the body circulation, which brings in its own natural things, methods of healing, the white blood cells, the nutrients that the body needs to fight the infection, and the substances are drawn out through the adsorptive power of the charcoal. We're talking about uh, God's Healing Way with Dr. Mary Ann McNeilis. And uh, really, uh, probably the most powerful thing we've talked about today is not the charcoal, it's not the contrast bath, it's probably a prayer. Would you agree with that? I agree. And so starting each treatment, no matter what treatment it is, with prayer and then stepping out in faith, I believe that you said, at the end of that treatment. And if you've been interested in today's program and uh, would like more information about this book, God's Healing Way, please contact 3ABN and we can get you information how to get in touch with Dr. Marianne McNeilis. I believe that Dr. McNeilis does seminars and different things also, teaching different groups and has a real ministry with many different people. We hope today's program has helped you and that as a result of it, you can use the pharmacy in your kitchen uh, to avoid problems or prevent problems or reverse them if you have them and that you can, as a result, have health that lasts for a lifetime.